And this by stability of the population that I've shown you, where simultaneously in a clonal population, two very different cell types can coexist, I think underscores the inadequacy of the traditional approaches that many of us have been taking uh, to study phenomena in micro microbiology and in cell biology and so on, based on the averaging the behavior of cells using what I call batch culture methods. So that would typically be uh, to take a population of cells growing in a shaker flask like this one, and then to pool the cells, to grind them up, to extract, say, an enzyme and measure enzyme activity or the amount of DNA or this sort of parameter. This, these approaches are very good for giving you an average value, which I'll call alpha, of some parameter in the population. But these approaches reveal nothing whatsoever about the underlying population structure, which can be quite heterogeneous and which, for, different, for the same value of alpha, can represent very different underlying population structures. And that's illustrated in simplified form graphically here, where I have schematized on the y-axis number of cells occupying a particular phenotypic state versus on the axis, x-axis, some particular cell parameter. That could be expression of a particular enzyme, uh, particular uh, cell growth time, interdivision time, uh, any parameter that can be quantified. So my point here is that in these four different populations that I've illustrated, <clears throat> the average value alpha is exactly the same for these four populations, and yet clearly these are very different populations of cells. So this average value alpha could represent a simple narrow Gaussian distribution as illustrated in this panel, or a broad Gaussian distribution as indicated here. It could even at one extreme represent a bimodal uh, distribution of cells in which the average value in fact is not represented by any individual cell within the population whatsoever. So that average value is extremely misleading vis-a-vis -vis the actual phenotype of uh, individual cells within the population. This bimodal or multimodal distribution can also occur with uh, the interesting phenotype, if you like, being represented by a small minority of the population. This would be representative, for example, of the persister phenomenon in which the cells in this small bump here are the ones that we're actually interested in. And yet, if we were to take a batch culture approach to studying this phenomenon, this is the signal we would get, the signal from the cells that we're not interested in, and we would learn nothing about the behavior of the subpopulation of cells, which is in fact the target that we want to study. So we and many others now um, are taking new approaches to the study of bacterial behavior at the single cell level. That is, the approaches that will allow us to capture the full complexity of cellular behavior and the variation between cells in behavior of particular uh, characteristics. One of the approaches in my lab that we're taking is to use a combination of microfluidic culture of bacteria and time-lapse microscopy to study the behavior of large numbers of individual cells before, during, and after imposition of a stress such as antibiotics. We do this, as I said, using microfluidic devices that we fashion using soft lithography and which are illustrated schematically here. These uh, consist, for, in this case, for example, of a simple glass cover slip on which the bacteria are seated, which is then overlaid with a semi-permeable membrane so that the bacteria are growing right underneath uh, the membrane, sandwiched between the membrane and the cover slip. We then overlay this with a block of material that's been fashioned by soft lithography with an input port for media to flow in, an output port for media to flow out, and flow channels cut through it for the media to flow across the surface of the membrane. So this is essentially a sandwich which we, through which we can pump media that feeds the bacteria. They grow happily on the cover slip, fed by the material diffusing through this membrane, and using a fully motorized and computer-controlled microscope that can visit as many as 100 different points on the cover slip and remember where it's been so it can keep coming back to those same points time and time again, we can collect over weeks of observation, even months of observation, in fact, detailed, the detailed behavior at, of a bacterial population at single cell resolution. So first and most importantly, we find that when we grow bacteria in these microfluidic devices and then expose them to a drug like isoniazid, the kill curve that we see is clearly biphasic. There's a period of rapid killing followed by a period in which killing essentially stops. So the phenomenon that we're trying to study, this biphasic uh, killing uh, response to the uh, drug isoniazid, can readily be studied at single cell resolution using these microfluidic devices.